Thank you, Speaker. I present the Higher Education Support Amendment, National Regional Higher Education Strategy Bill 2018, and the explanatory memorandum. The clerk. First reading a bill for an act to amend the Higher Education Support Act 2003 and for related purposes. The member for Indo. Uh, Mr Speaker, I move that this bill be read a second time. Colleagues, I'm pleased to stand in the House today to introduce this Higher Education Support Amendment Bill, which focuses on regional higher education. And I'd like to recognise in the gallery Dr Carolyn Perkins, the Executive Director from the Regional Universities Network, RUN, who's in the chamber today. RUN includes a network of universities, a CQ University, Federation University Australia, Southern Cross University, University of New England, University of Southern Queensland, University of our Sunshine Coast, and they've worked with our office to strengthen and promote the contribution of regional universities to national development. I'd also like to acknowledge colleagues in the House from the Alpine Valleys Community Leadership Program and stress to you that it's all about leadership. The delivery of higher education in regional Australia is central to the economic prosperity of this nation. And this bill provides a way forward to ensure regional Australia has a comprehensive higher education strategy underpinning policy decisions of government. The bill mandates that the government maintain a strategic plan and analysis of regional higher education and recognises the role of regional universities in sustaining economic growth and supporting employment in regional Australia. Support for delivery of higher education in regional areas is often seen only as an issue of equity, focused on improved access, participation and completion rates. And while equity is important, regional education is also an essential driver of the national economy. And I call on a national regional higher education strategy to actually put regional higher education at the centre of an integrated policy and programs about education, research, innovation, employment and, of course, regional development. Mr Speaker, as you know, regional universities play a unique role in developing our regional economies, contributing to social and cultural development. They act as an anchor for investment and, importantly, workforce development. And one of the biggest threats of sustainability of rural communities is the greatest export of our young people to cities. Three quarters of students who study at regional universities actually stay in regional universities after they graduate. So re regional universities educate the future workforce and help to grow and stabilise the population of regional Australia in regional Australia. This strategy must be developed in partnership with all levels of government, with regional higher education providers, their representative bodies and their industries. So, Mr Speaker, before I conclude my comment, I'd like to invite um, the member for Mayo to um, value add to this in her role as seconder of the um, private members' bill. But I say to my colleagues opposite, I say to the National Party, I say to members from the Liberal Party from regional Australia, where are you on this? Why are you letting one size fits all? And the consequence is that regional Australia gets left behind, we fall into a deficit model, and we are not able to take our place, our rightful place, in developing this whole country. Because one size does not fit all. The tyranny of distance, the issues facing regional Australia need to be taken and addressed in their own right. And I absolutely call on the National Party. I call on the regional members from the Liberal Party. Get up here. Can I say to my colleagues, see their interest? Where are they? Why are they not here today to be part of this debate? And I say they're not here because they don't care, which is a stunning, stunning call out to all the people in rural and regional Australia who vote for the coalition, hoping that they would bring their voice to parliament. And they singularly, repeatedly fail us. 